Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ron and thank you for stopping by. Now, if you've been to my channel before, you can see by looking around, I'm making a few changes to the layout of my studio. Some new lighting behind me, new backdrop. Now, I still have some accessories and things I wanna add in here to this empty space. Uh, some things aren't in yet, so bear with me. I do plan on doing a full um, studio tour with all the new hardware that I've ordered and things that I'm using for this new setup. If that's something you're interested in, I'll be making a future video on that as well. So aside from that, let's just jump right into it. Now, I've been wanting to shoot at 120 frames per second on my camera gear for some time now, and I've spent a quite a bit of time researching my next camera and finally landed on the Sony a7 III mirrorless digital camera. My existing two cameras are both Canon cameras and the models that I have just weren't able to shoot at 120 frames per second, so I'm pretty excited about this new camera. You've got YouTubers like Peter Lindgren, Daniel Schiffer, and a guy who makes me laugh, James Matthews from the UK, who all crush their YouTube videos using this Sony a7 III. Now, I'm gonna leave some links below if you're not familiar with these guys. They all put out some really quality content and they really show off what you can do with the Sony a7 III. If you're not familiar with this camera, let me just show you some of the footage that I shot just the other day. This is my first time using the Sony a7 III at 120 frames per second, and I think you'll appreciate what it can do if you're in the market for a new camera, and specifically if you want something that can shoot at 120 frames per second. And the lens that I'm using for the upcoming B-roll footage is the Sony FE 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 GM lens with a Typhon 82 millimeter variable ND filter. Again, I'm gonna leave all the links below if you wanna check out some of the gear that I'm using. must admit I really like the Sony camera and didn't have much difficulty, really any difficulty, making the switch from the Canon gear that I've been using for the past two years up to this point. Now with that being said, I have a few tips for getting the most out of your Sony a7III's slow motion capabilities. So my first tip is if you want the best slow motion, you definitely want to shoot with a camera or a drone that can do 120 frames per second. Now you can certainly do slow motion with lesser frame rates like 60 frames per second, but for that top notch, what they call buttery smooth slow motion, you're gonna wanna use something that can perform at 120 frames per second. Now shooting at 24 frames per second and trying to slow that footage down just isn't going to be good at all. And if it's one thing that everyone can really agree on, if you want that super buttery smooth slow motion, you need to shoot your footage at higher frame rates. Now, the second tip when shooting at 120 frames per second, regardless of the equipment that you're using, again, it doesn't matter if you're shooting with your drone or using a camera like this Sony a7 III, most times uh, you're gonna wanna set that shutter speed to double your frame rate for, or as close to double the frame rate as you can actually get. Now, there can be exceptions to this, but almost all times, most of the times, you're gonna wanna follow this rule. Everything has exceptions, so it's not fair to say it's always the rule, but it's certainly the rule the majority of the time. So if I'm shooting at 120 frames per second, I wanna set my shutter speed to one to 40th of a second. If I was shooting 24 frames per second, I'd wanna set my shutter speed to 1 48th of a second, or as close as you can get to doubling your frame rate. You might have to use one to 50th of a second at 120 frames per second, depending on your camera specs. Now, a lot of cameras don't actually have one to 40th of a second, so just round up to one to 50th of a second if you're shooting 120 frames per second, or round up to one 50th of a second if you're shooting at 24 frames per second. Now, the third tip, it's often difficult to get these settings dialed in perfectly on really sunny days or when shooting outdoors, so you'll wanna have yourself a good neutral density filter. I'm using the Typhon variable ND filter when I shot my B-roll footage for this particular video. My aperture was set to f2.8 in many of the shots, 
and that's letting a ton of light into the camera. So you'll need those ND filters if you want that shallow depth of field. A shallow depth of field means I'm deliberately blurring out the details in the background or the foreground of a scene, allowing you to draw the viewer's attention to a particular subject in your shot. Now, here's some examples of what I mean. With my aperture wide open at f2.8, I'm letting in a ton of light in the shot, and this means everything's blown out. So if I wanna keep the f2.8 aperture setting, I'm gonna to need to use a variable ND filter to block out some of the light, which allows me to keep that nice shallow depth of field. You can see the difference as I'm moving the ND filter in front of the lens and removing it. Setting your shutter speed properly is also gonna give you the right amount of motion blur in your shots. Now, I'm gonna leave links below for the variable ND filter that I'm actually using if you wanna check that out. A variable ND filter is really nice and saves you time because you don't have to keep swapping out filters um, like you would if you had individual ND filters. The variable ND filters gives you a wide array of blocking the sun. Now, I'm shooting all this video myself, so it can get a bit tricky trying to nail that focus, especially if you're trying to film by yourself like I was. So for facial shots, I just put my hand out in front of the lens until my hand was in focus, and then I switched from the autofocus to manual focus to lock in the settings on the camera. I was gonna do a whole video uh, on actually editing 120 frame per second footage in Adobe Premiere Pro, but there's actually a couple different ways to do this and uh, quite a few videos out there already. But if that's something that you're interested in, just let me know in the comments below and I can cover that in a future video. In short, you can adjust the speed in your timeline by right clicking on your clip and hit speed and duration and adjust your speed here. A second method would be to change the frame rate setting by right clicking on the clip in the project window, hit modify, then interpret footage. And once this setting box opens under the frame rate, choose assume this frame rate and change the frame rates from 23.976 if you're on a 24p sequence timeline. The third method would be speed ramping where you can speed up and slow down the clip at various points in the video. Now each method has its own uses and there will be times when one method uh, just works better than another. You're going to want to play around with it to see what actually suits your needs for any particular project. It's also worth noting that the Sony a7 III has a ton of different color profiles you can set in camera. I was using a custom Cine 4 color profile for the footage I showed you today and then color graded the footage. Here's what the footage looked like before I color graded it. And here's what it looked like after I color graded it. Now, of course, I'm still working on my color grading skills, so bear with me. I um, don't claim to be an expert. I'm learning just like you guys, but I can refer you back to some of the previous YouTubers that I mentioned earlier in this video if you want some great tips on that as well. Now, the best tip that I can give anyone who wants to up their game and improve the quality of their videos is just to get outside and actually start shooting. I spend a lot of time trying to learn new tricks and tips and improve my videos, but one of the best ways to learn is just get outside use your gear and just start shooting. I just wanted to share with you guys some new gear that I bought in hopes of providing better video quality and content on this channel. And I appreciate everyone for stopping by and I hope you're all doing well and everyone's staying safe. And that's really it. If you got any value out of this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It's always appreciated. So until next time, take care, happy flying, and remember, we got this.